the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, the, the Gold Gun's a big giveaway. Oh, Gold Guns are, you know, that's how you know. You yeah, know? There's, uh, there's some amazing websites that document all the different stuff that the cartel has, but they love Gold Guns. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, El Chapo got like a gold, uh, a very special Gold Gun when he was, uh, when he was named uh, one uh, uh, one of the uh, top uh, earners in Forbes, uh, the Forbes list, I think he got his number on the gun and everything. <laughs> the second to last time he got caught, because he got caught a lot of times and escaped. Uh, somebody somebody in the military that got him took it, you know. And, oh no! And, and it ended up in the museum. I think it's I think it's in a museum somewhere in Mexico City, uh, where a lot of these gold guns that's up. That's a war trophy for those guys, right? So there's like a gold gun section of the museum. Yes, <laughs> yes, there is Mexico, Mexico City. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty <clears throat> wild. Uh, gold gun, gold AK, AK-47s, you know. Now, if everything is so <coughs> corrupt down there, how does a guy like El Chapo keep getting popped? I mean, because uh, when, I, when I saw his escape, yeah, I was like, this is hilarious. The fact that this guy goes to the toilet and then he opens a door and whoop, he's in a tunnel and on an electric scooter and goes a mile, pops up on the other side. <laughs> And they had everything set up for him with electricity. Like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you know, the, the uh, I think the the, the thing that people kind of don't understand about the corruption is it's not just corruption because people are greedy. It's all it's also fear based corruption. So if you don't do what I say, we're gonna kill everybody in your family, even your dog. That type of thing. Right. Mm. So uh, after Little Chapo got escaped that last time. Um, you know, all of the staff at the jail got, you know, put in prison. And, you really? know, so and they were all part of it. There's rumors that they were, you know. Mm. Um, you it know. seems like somebody had to hear all that digging. Of course. You know, I mean, it's a, only a mile away. They well, it was, the it, was, it was pretty deep. Yeah. Uh, some, some, some things that should have been patrolled weren't patrolled. Uh, it was a pretty good, well made tunnel for what it was. Really yeah. well made. So a lot of the people that El Chapo actually used for these uh, tunnel operations, because uh, he, the same people that he used for the tunnels in the border region, all the active tunnels that are somewhere you know along the border, uh, all of those guys were pulled in from uh, from uh, silver mining uh, companies that used to operate all over Mexico. That kind of went into the toilet. So they were looking for jobs and. Wow, get El Chapo out. It's a good job. That's or, 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 or drug tunnels, you know. When you saw all that shit go down with Sean Penn and Sean Penn visiting El Chapo and Sean Penn writing an article for Rolling Stone, like, oh, were you like, what in the fuck is going on here? Uh, yes, uh, for a lot of for some reason that might not be, you know, m mainly was why are they giving him a. a why are they giving him this celebrity status? Yeah. You know, uh, there's a lot of glorification and a lot of, uh, you know, people venerating some of these people down there, you know, and they do a lot of harm, you know, so yeah. he's basically giving a voice to somebody. It would be the equivalent of somebody up here giving a voice to somebody that was you know, responsible for a lot of damage that done to the U.S., you know. it's Why do you think they did that? Like, what what, what was the romance? It was, it was romantic, right? There was something about it. It's like, here's Sean Penn, one of our biggest movie stars. Yeah. With uh, one of the biggest drug dealers ever. I mean, he is uh, El Chapo down, because I've, I've been to Sinaloa, and I've, I've actually done classes there, which was pretty surreal. Um, he is, uh, he's a folk hero. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's Robin Hood basically to these people. And like, uh, when this real moment that I had down there, I was driving along this, this bad bumpy ride highway and all of a sudden turned into a nice, that kind of highway. And, uh, the guys that I was with, uh, was with told me, oh yeah, this is the cartel made this highway in the back part of it. That's the government part of the highway. So this is the good one. <laughs> You know, uh, schools, uh, careers, lawyers, doctors, uh, all their careers paid for. Uh, By the Im cartel. Immigration processes of people that want to come over here, sponsorships and all that type of stuff on both sides, right? So the, the span of influence, that's, you know, that's how he kind of got to where he was. You mm. know? He was always helping people and he was investing in people and these people, this is, these investments would pay later on, you know? In a lot of ways, it sounds like he he benefited them. He benefited some aspects of the community. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the reason why the military couldn't get him, you, you could, people could say corruption, but because the he was basically he had a uh, human shield around him, 
you know, all these towns owed, you know, schools, uh, hospitals, every, uh, instead of Christmas down there, they celebrate the day of the Kings, you know? Um, so you would get presents mother's day. They would all get presents, that type of thing. So why would we want to help the military come in here and, and get El Chapo if he's right. doing this type of stuff, you know, that's, and that is the same all over Mexico with some of the cartels, you know, they, they, they uh, hearts and mind, hearts and minds type approach is what makes some of these groups, you know, long lived. So how much of an effort is there to eradicate the cartels? Because if you can get a guy like El Chapo, who at least in terms of like popularity is at the top, is he at the top of the list? As far like, as popularity? Or, but at the top of the, he's at the top of the list as far as popularity. But when as far as like the actual drug dealers, is he at the top of the list, or are there more there's, clever there's, folks that hide underground? Yeah, there's there's rumors of of people above him that are still out there somewhere. Yeah, that's what everybody like. That's the great conspiracy. Is that like uh, El Chapo is basically the bank manager? But it, that, well, you know, there's uh he has a, a compadre. You know, a compadre is somebody that if you're the daughter, if you're the godfather of my my kid, you're my compadre, right? So he has a compadre out there, uh, El Mayo Zambada, um, and he is still out there, right? And the the, uh, the extent of of how he works and where he works is unknown. So he's more slick. Exactly. He tries to stay more low key. Well, uh, there's you know some people get sick with the fame probably, and mm. they want to go outside. And well, once that mo that TV show Narcos came on, yeah. Then every well, like, people. I don't. I think there's a lot of people who did not realize how crazy the life of Pablo Escobar was. Yeah, and what really went down in Colombia. Yeah, I mean it's crazy. Uh, w Pablo Escobar was a single. You know, he was a phenomenon in his time and age, but he was one man. Now imagine replicating that type of insanity over the span of Mexico, and it's about eight or nine guys. You know, mm. that was the '90s. Early early two thousands, uh, because these guys were, you know, Legion of Doom type thing where they would be enemies, but they would have reunions and they would meet up and kind of agree on you know certain terms things and stuff. Yeah, just like in in the Pablo Escobar show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so they really do that. They get together and have meetings, and sometimes they kill each other. That's that's the uh, that's the uh, that's a reality. You know, they they do in, at times or did at times because things are currently after El Chapo. You know, things kind of shifted and changed. What happened? Uh, well, main thing is a power vacuum. And mm. with a power vacuum and uh, legalization on this side of certain substances, substances like uh, uh, marijuana, uh, the, the, the pot fields are now poppy fields. And, oh. and new, new things like... Uh, like um, like them now dedicating themselves to heroin instead of the, uh, instead of the weed, which but mysteriously there's still weed fields down there for some reason. You know, you, you guys are way better at making it than anybody <laughs> down there, but for some reason there's still some weed fields. Well, I think it's a lot of it is access, especially in the states where it's prohibited. Yeah, it's just they're probably more willing to that's get it to the people. It's probably it. Uh, meth, uh, meth precursors being brought in from China and, uh, to Mexico or now being made in Mexico. Mm. Like industrial level stuff, right? And a new, up, a new upsurging cartel down there that is trying to overtake the Sinaloa cartel, the new generation cartel, uh, is coming out of Guadalajara, and they're kind of really militarized, kind of wing of the cartel activities that are trying to, you know, take control over the whole thing. <laughs>